All right, everybody, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we, for the Train the Trainer, the first of two Train the Trainer uh, presentations that will be put on. Uh, one is expected to be put on uh, next week and uh, you will receive an invite for that one as well. Uh, before we get started here, please just make sure that your microphones are off and muted unless you're actually making a comment um, or asking a question, uh, you can open up your mics in those cases. Also, I'll be monitoring the chat room as best as I can uh, to, uh, if, if anything were to be in there, I will share that with Jim as well. Uh, before we get started, uh, again, just uh, wanna thank you for taking the time to be here today um, and uh, all of the rest of these uh, presentations for Officiate Michigan Day. I'm gonna hand it over to Jim Demris, the presenter for tonight's presentation. Well, thank, you, thank you very much, Brent. Uh, if anyone has, uh, I'll, I'll go to someone on the screen. Marcy, you can hear me? Okay, then I'm doing something right. Uh, again, a reminder, if you're not gonna be, wanna be heard, uh, keep your microphone off. Uh, if you're not gonna, don't wanna be seen, you can keep your, uh, your video off as well. We have, uh, wow, 70 people so far uh, joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Jim Demers, and I'm a member uh, of the uh, Michigan High School Athletic Association, certainly a member of the uh, SMOA, the Southeastern Michigan Officials Association, and have been uh, uh, by trade, by daytime, a nurse and educator for about 46 years. Uh, so I've had some of the tougher crowds that they're called doctors and nurses. And certainly in the last year with uh, COVID-19, I've had challenges also uh, in teaching and in inspiring people. Uh, to do the right thing. Uh, 25 years of officiating experience, 15 years of trainer experience. Um, I hold the title of the most annoying award uh, to the officials who don't want to do a pregame prior to a basketball game. Uh, I earn that title of being most annoying because I insist on being prepared for games. Uh, I say that tongue in cheek, although my, uh, my associate uh, with the SMOA, Herman Pierce, uh, also shares that same award. If we're on a game together, that third official has got a long, long night ahead of them. But welcome everyone first to uh, successful um, techniques uh, or successful training methods and techniques, a program that uh, I developed uh, about six years ago and have had great success with. Uh, first off, uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna go back to my presentation here. Uh, Always finding the right words is probably one of the most difficult things that we find, uh, unless we're prepared, certainly. And uh, this official has a hard time finding the right words. It, it, it had to be a touchdown. The base runner clearly was past the blue line. Uh, sometimes it feels like words like this leave our mouth and it's like, what did I just say? Uh, how did this ever happen? Uh, so we're gonna try to get you into a spot tonight where you can use words that are most appropriate and show you how to get to that point. You have an audience of certainly of coaches, of players, game administrators, fellow officials. Uh, so you have a lot of people that you need to do your very best with. Um, first and foremost, I always ask everyone, you've assumed a very tough role as a trainer, some for one sport, some for multi-sports. But what is actually a trainer and what is your role as a trainer? I came up with a definition of the trainer is someone who inspires and motivates another person to learn. And that's basically really the, the, the gist of our presentation today is you have a role to inspire and motivate another person to learn. Why be a trainer for MHSAA? Well, certainly you must have a passion for the sport or the sports. I know I look at the schedule of, um, of trainers and many of you have a lot, of, uh, a lot going on. Some have multiple sports, uh, some have uh, multiple associations that you're involved with. Uh, you may wanna give back as a trainer, uh, paying forward the, the knowledge you've received from officials before you. You may desire to be a mentor, um, which a lot of officials have done successfully and improve your own skills and abilities at the same time. Humility plays a huge part in learning, and I, I'm a firm believer that if you are able to uh, admit your mistakes quickly and emphatically, uh, that you'll learn from uh, any experience that you have. Um, 
you may be no longer a, able to officiate. Officiating is a tough physical sport for a lot of people. Uh, running up and down the court on the field, um, certainly there are sports with less running involved, but they do have a commitment involved in time and physical and mental. Uh, it could be a voice in your head. Now that pretty much pertains to me, but something told me one day, try to give back, try to disseminate information and give it back to folks as best you possibly can. Um, or perhaps at your association, nobody else would volunteer. Uh, and you didn't even raise your hand, but yet you were recruited. You simply have a talent for it. Uh, what's really heard by trainers over time, and we'll get to, um, in fact, I should probably say on the format, on this format, if somebody has a question, you can unmute. I will not feel offended if you ask a question, but we're just starting the drum roll now. But what's, what's really heard by trainers, uh, when you hear someone say, I've been officiating for 30 years, I don't need to learn anything new. What they're kind of saying is I'm not interested in getting better. You're going to hit a roadblock. And more so, I think, with the veteran official and you will with the newer official, you're going to see that happen. I'm paid by the game, not the hour. Let's get this over with and get out of here. Um, boy, I tell you, and, and, and this is something we hear a lot uh, for officials that have had a long day at the office, a uh, hard day at work, perhaps a hard day at home, and they want to get home. What they're really saying is I'm here only for the money. Uh, I know all that I need to know. I'll be, I'll be just fine, they'll tell you. Uh, what they're saying is I'm going to keep trying to fool people into thinking that I know what I'm doing. Now, that <laughs> you're thinking of that one official now at that one contest you had where this might certainly apply. Uh, I, I know it's the rule, but my way works better. We've heard that before. Uh, and what that really means is I'm not interested in following the rules. Uh, you're going to look for folks that will want to circumvent rules, that will want to make up their own rules. And by doing that, obviously, the, the officials, when there's more than one in a game, will not be on the same page. And as a result, the players, the coaches, everyone uh, loses. Um, the new mechanic is confusing. Let's just use the old one. <laughs> Uh, that was probably one of the biggest ones from the National Federation. And it means I don't care how I affect other officials. I like the old way better. Uh, some people are putts, putzes that will not want to change habits. They've developed habits over the years and will tell you anything to not develop a new habit. Anyone could be a trainer. I've heard that before. What that really means is I'm glad it's you and not me. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today and wanting to be better, because that's exactly why we're here today. I thought some time ago there'd be, uh, I'd have five must-haves as far as a trainer goes, and starts first with rules, knowledge, knowing, and understanding the rules. And as simple as this statement is, knowing is one thing, understanding is something else, because you will be challenged over and over again to, uh, to someone asking, please explain what that means, or what does that mean? Or they may even say, why? Um, you must have good mechanics knowledge. I know all of you have had the pleasure or displeasure, depending on your perspective, of working with folks that have made up mechanics, that you look at them and you think they must have seen that on some television show or in the NBA or in the NCAA or something, but it's not what we do here. Um, we have to make sure our mechanics are, um, are, are consistent with what the National Federation uh, tells us, what the Michigan High School Athletic Association endorses. Um, communication skills. Boy, at home, at the job, on the field or the court or wherever you participate in sports, communication skills, verbal and nonverbal, are so important. Administration skills, how you deal with administration, how you talk to them. Are you, when you're greeted by them, do you seem like you're uh, happy to be there? Uh, do you smell like smoke? Uh, are, you, are, are you dressed appropriately? Uh, these are things I've heard uh, other officials, uh, assigners, in fact, at associations say uh, your first presentation or the way you come into a facility or onto a field is the way you're going to be remembered. And lastly, your people skills. 
And I hope to gather information or ideas from others today when we get to our exercise part on hearing things on uh, how people skills have helped you. Uh, what tricks, if you would, if I could use the word tricks, you've used before, uh, what little things you've practiced in the mirror at home, things you practiced on others, things that are surefire ways to win over a coach or an argument. Well, getting it right from the start about being unsure, puzzled, confused, etc. I always start my answers to any coach, any player, any official with these two words, by rule. And I know I saw Steve Youngblood come on a few minutes ago, and Steve knows I've been ringing these two words out for years as a trainer, but uh, that's a little plug for Steve Youngblood. But by rule, if anybody says, why was that a legal move? Why was that, why did that goal count? Why was the, the net involved here and not there? Um, you, you go through a rapid process of putting an answer together for the coach, and then you start out with by rule. If it's by rule, it cannot be argued. Uh, Mark Ewell used to say, and I'm sure Brent does now, that most of the phone calls they come in, they come in on Monday morning after the Friday night contest. Don't start with, you won't, you won't believe, um, uh, no, uh, I can't believe the official uh, didn't follow the rule to the letter. Uh, it's usually something like, I can't believe what the official just said. Officials that say things that are out of turn or out of context are usually to cover up the fact that they don't understand the rule and they're trying to explain their way out of a situation uh, using words to maybe substan or to, um, to justify what they did or the call that they made. Lead by example. As a trainer, I, I think most, a lot of the trainers still have the T that they wear on their, on their sleeve or uh, people know that you're a trainer. Uh, they're going to watch you. They're going to watch what you do. They're going to listen to what you say. And if you're doing the right thing, it's always nice for them to come back at a later date and say to someone, yeah, because Jim said so, or because Marcy said so, or Chuck said so, uh, or, or Gino said so. And Gino, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, you've had many camps uh, and clinics. Uh, you have to set an example from the minute oh. you got here. From the minute you get out of your car, sorry to put you on the spot, Gino, I saw you were on the screen, so I had to say, I had to recognize you, but leading by example is so very important. Now, ask yourself this question as we get into our exercises, do you compliment or do you contradict MHSAA and National Federation of High Schools? I'm pretty darn confident you're going to say, I compliment it. I only use National Federation and MHSA approved rules and mechanics. It's on the recording when you call the state office. You know, the only rules for interpretation are the ones that are followed. It'll tell you each time you call. And when there's a problem to be solved, they're going to look at the rule. They're going to look at what is approved and what is right. And that will always be your guidepost. So back to those two words, always start with by rule and always stick to a rule. Um, if you can't, it's okay to say, coach, let me look at, let me look it up. Let's talk about it at halftime, whatever the case would be. And I'll get an answer back to you. Just make sure uh, that you do. One of my more favorite moments, there's the T on the sleeve. I don't know if anyone still wears a T on the sleeve, but, uh, uh that's back when I, I guess I was, uh, looking younger and better and more agile on the court. Uh, but earning your stripes is something we do every day. Whether it's as a trainer or as a basketball uh, official or a, a volleyball official, uh, swimming, track and field, we have all officials represented today. Uh, my heart is closest to basketball and I've made it a pledge to kind of draw myself away a little bit today uh, and remember that uh, we have a lot of sports being represented today and a lot of trainers as well. Trainer support comes in a number of different ways. The MHSAA library is one way uh, online, the information is endless. The online courses are endless. The sportsmanship summits are endless. Be the referee, the audio and visual files where you have clips of certain sporting events showing you ways that you can look at plays differently, that you can um, dissect different things, think about them and be prepared for your next game. The online rules meeting, um, and those are 
uh, with exams or quizzes rather along the way. Those are a very good way too to, um, uh, to uh, keep up on the rules. And I, I was gonna mention this year that they did change the rule that all regular season contests for both varsity and sub varsity, um, you must uh, attend the rules meeting or take the rules meeting uh, online. So uh, that means that if you intend on doing varsity games or know somebody that intends on doing a varsity or sub varsity, sub varsity in high school, that they do take the, uh, the online uh, rules meeting uh, seriously. Uh, online exams, everyone's favorite, I'm sure. Uh, we've gone from, uh, uh, I, I know the people that have written these tests, some of them are very discouraging to some officials. Uh, they, they struggle through them. Uh, they discuss them, but one thing it has successfully done, and Brent will back me on this, it's got officials to uh, use these, the rule book and the case book more often. Now they're opening up the rule book, opening up the case book, and taking things apart a little bit differently than they have in the past. Uh, MHSA officials guidebook is also a good guide uh, for officiating. Uh, rule books, case books, we just mentioned those, officials video training, MHSAA staff are available to answer questions too, um, and other trainers. Be careful about other trainers though, because some other trainers uh, may not have the right answer, but it's always good to consult and collaborate. Find that one trainer who works as hard as you do to keep up on the rules and keep up on the case books, uh, case book studies and talk with them. Talk with them and see how they would do it. See how they would explain it. Uh, it surely helps. And starting with training. So as a trainer, as we get started and we get a group full of people, this is something that we've all uh, gotten involved with um, right off, right out of the gate. Uh, a good valuable training tip is to uh, reset. Hit the reset button before training new officials. If you can remove as many uh, bad habits as possible, uh, that's good. Starting with a green, if you would, a green official or a newer official is sometimes more uh, simpler and, and more advantageous to uh, teaching than it would be to a veteran official. Uh, but certainly both, um, if you're interesting enough, will be hungry for the knowledge. Uh, remove uh, corrupt files, old habits, college mechanics, AAU, parks and rec league mentality, the grab and go philosophies. Uh, these are things that a lot of officials have that you wanna make sure that uh, you cleanse as much as you can and start with a new official, at least uh, maybe a new desire to learn, a new, a new desire to improve their skills. First training technique. If I'm talking too fast, it's because uh, I just talk too fast, I guess. Um, effective training technique number one. We're going to refer to these as golden nuggets. Uh, Brent, thank you for making golden nuggets for me. I didn't have these on my original set of uh, slides, but he made me a golden nugget. Uh, first golden nugget is to have a plan. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people will go into a meeting, into a meeting, uh, uh, an association meeting, and just want to open it up, uh, uh, and chew fat, and tell stories. Have a plan. If you're going to do a pregame, have a written pregame. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It can be on a three by five card. It could be like me in a, in a binder, uh, which always frustrates people because they think it's going to take forever, which it usually does. But have a plan involved. Uh, prepare your outline and select a topic. At your association meetings, don't feel you need to cover everything. One topic is good enough. Know your audience as well. If they're all new officials, if they're all veteran officials, you may want to gear your presentation to uh, the audience that you have and stick to your topics. I think nothing is harder, but nothing is more uh, advantageous to stick to your topic. Golden nugget number two is execute the plan. I used to sit at home on Sundays as we, a lot of us did and watch the Lions games. And I'd always walk away saying, boy, they got a great game plan. I just wish they could execute it. And even the folks in the football league were saying they had a great game plan. Oh, these guys were super. They just failed to execute. So you want to make sure that you execute that by following your outline and engaging your audience. And I know I haven't done that yet because I haven't taken my first breath tonight. Uh, but I'm getting to that. And again, if anyone has any questions, just feel free to jump in when I do take my first breath. Uh, but engage your audience as much as you can. 
have fun, be animated, and uh, utilize return demonstrations whenever you can. Uh, that can be through words or through actions. If you're doing mechanics, it's good to get a return demonstration. And when you're done, you're done. That's pretty much the way to execute a plan. The third training technique is why. Uh, the why behind your statements. Uh, to say why something is the way it is always helps. When you're a child and mom or dad says, do this or do that, or they ask a junior or uh, the child to do something, uh, the first question they always ask is why? They want to know why. So be able to substantiate whatever you say with a why behind any statement you make. Turning mystery into meaning, that's when you turn the mystery into meaning, is when you tell somebody why. Provide rationale. That's tougher to do, but if you can say the reason we have that rule in the rule book is because it stops this from happening or it was precipitated by something that's happened over the years, people will start to get a clear understanding and then demonstrate. Okay, I'm gonna take a breath now because I'm gonna hyperventilate soon, but does anyone have any questions at this point? If, if you don't, that's okay. If not, uh, questions. I have a question. Yes. On your last slide said, um, return i can't i can't remember what it was but i wasn't sure i understood that clearly utilize return demonstration return demonstration is something that i've used in the medical business but what it means what it means to me is to encourage maybe would have would have been a more appropriate word re encourage return demonstrations when you say or give a or illustrate a plan and discuss it to have feedback include a uh, discussion where you know you are being understood. Demonstrations would be referred, would refer to strictly to the mechanical part. So if you're showing people how to maybe call a foul or to signal for a touchdown or to signal a, uh, a, a, um, a violation that you would have them do that maybe as a group, maybe singularly, but that's uh, the, re the return demonstration I was talking about. Good question. I will change that slide, I can guarantee it. <laughs> All right. Serving the Y burger. This is a fun thing to nail down how important it is to tell people why. Um, not just to give them a rule, not just to say it's, it's a great idea because, but to serve a Y burger. And the Y burger looks something like this. Mm, that looks awfully good. Um, it's when you have, I'm gonna move my screen here because I can't see a couple things. Uh, a fact that you present um, would be, let's say, um, when you arrive at the gym, you should always look professional. That could be a fact. A uh, fact that we probably can't argue, a fact that we've probably seen not followed every time, but it's a good fact to go with. Um, the next would be uh, the benefit. The benefit of doing that is you present yourself in a very professional manner. So what I've actually done is say is not just set a fact. Facts almost sound like demands sometimes. They almost sound like rules and they're very stuffy and sometimes get a negative response. If you give the benefit or the rationale, that's what, that's what makes a big difference. Now, the nail down to this, all this is, you do want to look professional, don't you? You do want the administration at the school to feel that uh, you're a leader, that you are the, uh, the person in charge of the other officials that you say you are, uh, and to feel more confident about what you're about to do on the court or on the field or on the near the pool or uh, wherever else uh, we have our contests. So uh, facts, again, are always better uh, when you fill it with a benefit. Exercise one. If the fact was this car gets great mileage, who can say, uh, who can back that up with why? We're doing, we're doing a, like, a, uh, like a, the why burger now. If the fact is this car give, gives great mileage, why would that be important? Yeah. 
I usually count to five. And if nobody says anything, I'll throw the first one up there. It saves money at the gas pump. Uh, that would be a why. So getting good gas mileage, if somebody said, well, so what? What difference does that make? Why is getting good gas mileage important? It saves money at the gas pump. It's better and healthier for the environment. Obviously, if it's burning less fuel, it's better for the environment. Uh, the car has uh, better resale value if we have, uh, uh, if it's, if it gets, gets great, great mileage, at least today, statistics are showing the gas guzzlers don't get as good of a resale value uh, uh, as you would imagine. How about this one? This be an easier one. It makes sense to wear your seatbelt. Anyone, a benefit on why, or somebody says, why does it make sense to wear your seatbelt? What might your answer be? Save your life. Could save your life. It's I don't know how well Jim drives. <laughs> I've been actually, I've actually slowed down. Uh, it's hard to believe that, but I've slowed down and figured, what's the hurry? Uh, I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere except my destination. Uh, it saves lives. Certainly, uh, that's, that's a good one. Um, anybody else? It is the law. It's the law. It saves don't, lives. Don't get a ticket. Yeah, violation is a $65 ticket or a fine. Uh, I think I checked online. It was it was 65 last time I checked, but uh, depending on where you're speeding and how fast you're, I'm sorry, depending on where you're caught uh, might make a difference of $10. Uh, and not wearing a seatbelt could involve, uh, obviously it saves lives, but could involve uh, you being in some terrible, uh, having injuries as a result of the accident or causing injuries to another car uh, or um, being involved in litigation forever and ever and ever. Uh, but that's one of the things that a, a, in an exercise, you want to say, here's a fact, I'm going to back it up with a benefit. So what's working for you? Um, in the MHSAA and trainers that they've spoken with, uh, we've had uh, different suggestions come in. One of them was ask the expert. Uh, we've had... Um, emails go out from the association as trainers, you should have an email address uh, for all of your folks in your association and be able to uh, welcome any questions about rules. Um, I think it's kind of scary at first to make that offer because you may, you may think hundreds may come in, but if one or two a week come in, that's about the average. Uh, and uh, it gives you an opportunity to hone your own skills and look up information regarding uh, questions they may have about situations that have happened. And nine times out of 10, it's going to be a situation that's happened to them. PowerPoints, whiteboards, and videos. Um, I prepare a PowerPoint for every presentation I have at our association meetings. Ideally, a PowerPoint presentation should be uh, 12 slides. That's what all the experts say. I sometimes get up to 20, depending on how many, how many graphics I have, but you don't need a whole lot just enough to keep you on track with enough bullet points that you can present. Um, conducting clinics, uh, lectures and demonstrations. Can anyone speak to their success in conducting a clinic uh, recently or, or has a perhaps a camp scheduled this year? Anyone? How do you anticipate the response being this year? Are we still talking about mask mandates? Are people still being squeamish about getting back, or I should say being safe about getting back? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of controversy, a lot of conversation. Uh, I always say, if you want to start a conversation, walk into a room today and say, so who hasn't been vaccinated? Uh, that'll get a conversation started. But rather than do that, make sure you uh, uh, prepare well for your, your clinics, uh, and let everyone know what you're going to be covering at that clinic, because that's important, too. Sports blogs and websites. Hey, real, real quick, Jim. Yes. Is, is Mark Howells on? If, if you are, can you give a little bit of feedback of to how your <clears throat> participation numbers were for your volleyball clinic that occurred? I was going to say something about that, too. But if Mark is on, he can go ahead. I am. Can you hear me? There he is. Hi, Mark. Hello. How'd the uh, clinic go? How did that volleyball clinic go for you? The uh, response was very good. We had 
a full clinic because we limit it to how many can participate in the morning and the afternoon. In the morning, this is for volleyball, by the way. We were training brand new officials in the morning in the classroom and then move them in onto the court in the afternoon to work with clinicians to apply what they had learned in the morning. Got a lot of good feedback, had some negative things happen that really was disappointing, but um, that's we're gonna be dealing with that. And we have another one tomorrow. And this one's gonna be even a little bit bigger. We have uh, three extra people that are coming, two of them from the state of Indiana, which is interesting. So uh, we, uh, we're expecting another good day tomorrow. Well, it's good the coaches, uh, we always ask that the, uh, the officials or whoever is running the clinic or running the camp uh, go to the, uh, the coaches and say, we've got some new folks. We wanna get them excited about the sport. We wanna get them excited about officiating. So certainly they're not gonna be perfect. They're gonna do their best, but we wanted you to know that. And if you temper it that way, it seems uh, maybe they, they accept a little bit more of what goes on that day as learning and not as uh, screwing up, if you would. So uh, you're gritting your teeth. I'm not sure why you're doing that, Mark, but <laughs> is, is, are, the, are the coaches pretty good about uh, the newer officials? We had one very bad experience which I will deal with tomorrow. But uh, midway through the day, we had three people leave because of a coach's comment to them. And that was very disappointing to me. Last year, National Federation asked the question to officials around the state, around the United States, what is the single biggest reason why you're getting out of officiating or not getting into it? And they said they don't wanna deal with the parents or the coaches. That was the number one reason. Not that not, it's not enough money, I can't learn the rules fast enough. My uniform doesn't fit. And for a lot of us, that is for me too. Uh, but a lot, of the, a lot of those things are important. But number one reason, I don't want to deal with the parents and the coaches. So uh, if nothing else, let your folks know as they're going through their program that this is going to be a challenge no matter where you go. There's always going to be that naysayer. Um, I know people that have done football where they like to, to be as far away from the coach, as far away from the fans as they can. They feel much better there. There's some sports though, you're gosh darn it, you're right next to the coach. Your ear is within uh, 10 feet and they'll use that or try to use it as their advantage. I think a lot of you have been there, whether it's on the basketball court or on the football field, volleyball, lacrosse, uh, coaches wait for that opportunity. So, um, but good luck to you, Mark. Good luck to you and your volleyball <laughs> recruits. Uh, how many in your class total? We had uh, 48 last week and we have 51 tomorrow. That is a lot of recruits. for This is just for volleyball. Right. Some are veterans coming in for training. But uh, of the new ones, uh, it's 25 last week and it's 24 wow. tomorrow. Terrific. Well, good luck to you. Thanks for, thanks for chiming in. Anybody want to respond to anything Mark said? Hey, Jim, this is Dave Gonzalez. I'm with the Lansing Wrestling Official Association. Hey, um, every year we do, a, a, um, we bring a bunch of teams from the Lansing area. Um, we bring all our young officials. We do our uh, class time and then we do our mat time. And then the guys, the teams that come in, um, they got the young officials out there with the senior officials and we're working, we're working, we're working. And anytime I, I look at a... Um, training i never look at training as a negative um and we have always talked to the coaches hey these guys are young let them yeah. learn we're out there we're senior officials we're correcting as we go because you're not going to win a state title uh december 1st um but we have had tremendous success with that and we got a lot of good young officials um and i just think the key is obviously it, it, with anything in life whether it's sports or life communication coaches these guys are new we want to keep them and the biggest thing has been um these young kids go out for a jv match and the coaches who are trying to get into the jv hall of fame are tearing these kids apart and the kids is like yeah hey, this ain't worth it <laughs> i'm going home so we've been trying to work with the coaches and i we've had a lot of success but at the same breath you got a lot of the my way officials and that's the uh got a lot of uh, high school wrestlers going to that um my main concern is hey um you know 
you can you got to do this you got to do this you got to do this just take a look at it and and they're like hey, i did my way for three years i don't need your help so so you got to kind of cut through the fat there yeah. so it's just a matter of keyword communication but i think we've had uh tremendous success all the we work with the coaches um and we bring money in for and we throw scholarship money at the kids at the end of the year um but it's all about talking you know we get these kids in and so when a kid who's done officiating what are you doing next year come talk to us come talk to us and if you can grab five to 10 kids every year or two and bring them in. You know what? That's, that's your, that's your feeder program right there. Um, but, uh, but when you're training, that's what it's called training. Uh, and don't put any uh, uh, stress on them because right, that's their safe place. And this is, you're not messing up here because this is where you're learning. You know, got a happy, so. got a happy dog. I hear that. But. Oh my, yep. Yeah. Well, he's guarding me from the Amazon driver, by the way. <laughs> he apparently, agrees, he apparently agrees with you. But Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave makes a really, really good point, and and uh, you're going to have some pushback. You're going to have some resistance from the older officials because it's hard to change habit. I mean, I, complacency sets in, and it's hard to change habit. But one thing as trainers, we can draw from this, and and from Dave's experience, and from. Uh, all the experience of folks that have had clinics and camps is you have to practice patience. You have to do a lot of encouraging, a lot of running back and forth, a lot of shadowing, a lot of encouragement, uh, trying to choose your words very carefully, not, well, yeah, screwed up again. You made the wrong call, but uh, you know, you, you did good here. You did good there. And if you work a little bit harder on this part and that part, uh, you'll continue to improve and say words that are important because that is for a lot of the uh, folks coming to your camps and clinics, a very traumatic time. So uh, in your sports blogs or websites that you visit, uh, take all that in consideration. The newsletters, uh, we're back to our slides or email grams. Uh, if you find something that's good, I've had a couple things published. I know a lot of officials around the state have put together a lot of things that they've presented uh, to the state and we've, they've been published as well. Uh, those are good because those are things that you've taken a lot of time and a lot of thought uh, and they've made it available to other officials as well. Uh, Jim. Attending... Yes. Um, I'm Walter. I am uh, work out of the USA chapter. I'm uh, a baseball umpire. Um, last year, we were going to implement something. Of course, the wheels all fell off, but I've moved up here from Texas where I was also a trainer. And one of the things we did was in our meetings, we brought in a coach or two that was well-respected, not some, you know, wild guy. And we had them address our group of officials and tell us, what are your expectations from an official? What do you want to see when that official's out there? And every sport being different, but basically it was nice to hear what, quote, the other side had to say, we, we think we know it, but if you bring in the, the coaches, uh, one of the consistent things for us out of every coach we ever brought in was being in the right position. Yep. That's just an example, but I just thought I'd throw that in what's working. We're going to try it again this year for the first time up here, bring in a couple of the well-respected baseball coaches and say, give us your input. Thank you for letting me speak. Well, that's, that's great. And, and, and I only wish that I had said that because that makes more sense. It puts really, a, uh, it puts a really the icing on the cake. Uh, uh, the coaches never misunderstand hustle. I saw that written once in a, in a periodical where they never misunderstand hustle in getting there, being in the right spot to make the right call. And for a lot of officials, that is the single biggest thing that they can work on is knowing the rules, understanding the rules, and being in the right spot to make the right call. If you can do all those things and hustle to the spot, I think a lot of the coaches are going to say exactly what Walter points out. Uh, nice job. Uh, I've, had, I've had coaches say some things that I carry now 15, 20 years later. One little one-liner. And uh, it's been, it's been, it was a compliment. Uh, maybe left-handed, but uh, a good compliment that uh, means a lot when you work hard. Uh, whether it's on the court, on the field, or just explaining something in a way that very few officials can. So as trainers, we should always encourage that to practice, to get lines, 
to use what works and share it with your fellow officials. Uh, social get-togethers, as long as it's not at the bar, uh, I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, uh, be in a place where you can conduct business uh, and then when the business is over, then have the enjoyable time. Uh, but to get together with trainers and officials, whether it's after a game, whether it's on a weekend, uh, whether it's before an association meeting, and talk about the things that are making sense and working good for you too. That's how we share ideas and we grow. Uh, and as Dale Carnegie says, be hearty in your praise and lavish in your approbation. Uh, use the words or use the I don't know, I'll get back to you rule as much as you can. Some of the officials, uh, dear trainers, will will tell, the, will tell you in meetings, uh, if they're honest, that they felt they owed a coach an explanation. Uh, they felt that they owed a, a player an explanation. You don't owe anybody an explanation and never misunderstand that silence is probably your best way to approach a lot of things. And unless a coach asks you a question, don't feel you have to give them an answer. Wait until a question is asked. Don't feel obligated to spill information to the coach just because you feel that something you did requires an explanation. Wait for the question to come. And if you don't know the answer, say, I'll need to get back to you. Use that rule, but for heaven's sakes, don't forget to get back to a coach. Whether it's an email or a phone call, that goes such a long way that I've had coaches call the assigner and tell them what a great official they had on a game uh, because they, call, they, they, they said they'd get back, they did, the rule made sense. And there's some very, very close rules, some very, very close situations in a game that you just don't have time to talk about all that. Uh, practice humility, but a little ego is okay. I always say it's good to uh, be humble, but to have a little bit of a, a little bit of an attitude, a little bit of love for the sport, a little bit of love for the coaches, and, and, but always know your audience. I think Mark Yule said it once good. You can joke with some people, but uh, humor isn't always a good thing to respond with. So, uh, demonstration. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is Dale Yoder here. I'm the trainer for the Fruit Belt Officials Association here in Southwest Michigan. Uh, the point you made about uh, getting back to coaches, uh, most of the coaches in my area have my email address. And I tell them, if you have a question or you need to, to let me know about some official, some crazy play that happened to you, yep. please email me, uh, text me, call me, whatever, so I can discuss it with you. And if the, you know, if the official has made a mistake, I can contact that official and, and clear it up with them or that official can contact me yeah. and we can figure out how to move on from there to improve your next uh, experience with that official so that everybody be, is happy with Ooh. the results of, you know, maybe we made a mistake. Uh, let's create, let's see what we can do as coaches and officials together to correct that mistake. So the next time we don't have this um, back and forth um, Anima, uh, anim, uh, animati or whatever I'm trying to say, a relationship where you're going to go in with this attitude that you don't like this official because they screwed up. We can get together, we can talk about it, we can clear it up, and you know move on from there, and everybody can can go and be on the same page with the next time. You know we're going to do our best to to make to correct all those mistakes. Are you are you an assigner and as well as a trainer, I, Dale? Are you an assigner also? No, I am not. No, okay. I'm not. I know some no, associations. I do not assign. Uh, that's done by. Well, my, my hat's off that's, to you. That's uh, done by go ahead, Dale. Yeah, I just, I just tell coaches, you know, if, if you have a problem with an official, I need to know if you have a question about a play, something, I need to know that as a trainer. So I can, you know, maybe I made a mistake in something I said to the official, uh, you know, especially the younger umpires, maybe they misunderstood. We have to clear this up so that we can move forward and everybody really, you know, is on the same page with this is what we have to do to make ourselves better as officials wow. to, you know, to make it easier for coaches. So we get less uh, hassles from coaches and, and the young guys want to stay with it as opposed to, you know, I can't put up with coaches or parents or whatever I'm getting out. So I, I, you know, I do the best I can with that. And I have, you know, I get a lot of positive feedback from some of the coaches in the area about, you know, I'm, I'm glad I called you about this. I'm glad I talked to you. Uh, you know, thank you for getting with that official. I had him again. And, yeah. you know, what an improvement that official made from the first time I had him to this time. So it works, uh, you know, if everybody is just willing to sit down and say, hey, okay, here's what we need to do to get better. Well, that's, I see, just uh, wanted to bring that up. Because you've made that point. 
No, Dale, Dale makes a good point. Dale as a trainer has gone over and above uh, what a lot of trainers have done. Although the invitation I'm sure is open to other trainers. Assigners a lot of times get a lot of the phone calls. Uh, the assigners that, that I work with want to know right out of the gate, if something happens, you better get on the phone because if your phone call gets there before the school's call gets there, you're probably innocent. If it comes after the school's call, you're probably guilty. Um, I say probably, but uh, probably in all small case letters, but it's good if something happens, if there's something in a game that happens, uh, that you contact your assigner or do what your association has set up to communicate so that you're not uh, making sure the, the trainer or the or the, or the uh, assigner is blindsided by a coach calling up complaining about something that may have happened in a game. Uh, but everybody has favorite lines. I like when I, when someone, a coach, uh, and I hope we can get a, a few more to share. I'll go first and say that if a coach says, uh, Jim, that was a horrible call. That's not the way I saw it. Uh, I, a lot of times I'll say, well, coach, if it happened the way you say it happened, then I blew the call. And if you think about that, if it happened the way you said it, coach, then I blew the call. Uh, shows a little bit of humility, a little bit of my ego, but at the same time, it gives the coach at least the feeling that if it happened that way, then you blew the call. Uh, or just simply say, I kicked it. I kicked it. I, I blew it. You'd be surprised how many coaches say thank you and the game moves on. So anyone else have any favorite one-liners that they may share with their association as a trainer to say if a coach uh, to diffuse that anyone in our group well you guys are good i'll tell you what you are good uh my next slide here is uh, uh, is called creating a visual landscape and, and obviously I, I i didn't do it for all sports but what i like to do is uh have your clinics or have your camps i, I know uh, mark you were um I think Mark was talking about volleyball, to have actual nets, to have a basketball court, to have a field for uh, lacrosse, uh, a pool maybe, uh, or at least some visual aids that will create an environment or a visual landscape to talk to your officials. Nothing is better than seeing it uh, actually on the court. So what I've done is I've followed the cue of others before me who are much smarter still than I am. And I've, I've, I've taken newspapers and we created a primary area of coverage for basketball. On the court, you can say it's there, it's there, it's there, but we put the newspapers down in a way where we can work with two person and three person officiating, creating our own visual landscape. So when the, when the players are out there learning their areas of coverage and where their eyes should be looking or not looking, uh, the visual landscape is one thing we've done, which works out very well. Um, what we've done now is go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Jim, I was going to say, uh, that, uh, Bruce made a comment, uh, to your last slide of something that one-liners that you might say, he says, uh, I understand what you're saying. Coach often helps, uh, affirm with a head nod, uh, just, to, to for, I guess for them to understand that you are listening. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, some people feel compelled, don't you, sometimes when they're saying something that you need to respond. And sometimes a coach, all they want to do is be heard. Uh, again, you do not have to answer a question unless there's a question that's asked. So why feel compelled you have to say something? Less said, more said. And in many cases, the less you say, the more you say. So it's good to listen. Uh, just a head nod, that's a good point to make. You've said nothing by giving a head nod, letting the coach know that you've heard what they have to say. I will get next to a coach side to side, not face to face. I'll put my hand up and I'll say, uh, what do you got coach? What are you seeing out there? What's going on? And have the coach say, and then just nod and then move right on. Uh, just being heard is very, very important. You'd be surprised how many officials will not provide an ear to a coach. Now, someone out there saying right now, but you can't do that every time. And you're absolutely right. Coaches will grill you. Coaches will ride you and they'll look for an opportunity. Uh, they'll scream across the field, scream across the court at you. I will approach them when the opportunity exists and I will say, coach, I would never address you from across the field or across the court. Please do not address me. If you have something to say, let's discuss it at the appropriate time. And you have to sometimes put things in 
and 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 in, in, in a put yourself in a position where you can have a productive discussion. So that's a very good point. Anyone else have any other comments on things that they said to diffuse a situation with a coach? Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of undesirable things that have been said. I've heard even heard some officials say, you know, coach, I was uh, four feet away. You were 40 feet away. Uh, there's ways to be clever with your words that you may find amusing, but coaches will not find amusing. I think the most important thing is, is to be direct. Uh, and if you can't answer the question, don't try to stumble through an answer that's not going to make any sense or it's going to upset the situation. Get back to the coach at a later date. And I think that's probably the best rule of thumb to follow. I think over the years with coaches that wanted, uh, it's just a straight answer. And if not, I don't think any coach really wants an immediate answer every single time. So uh, anyone else before we move to our closing? Yeah, I'll quickly throw something out there. It's Dave Gonzalez again. Um, I, and, and as a, a, a young official and even a senior official, uh, we get that those coaches walk to our table. And you're like, oh, I know exactly what he's going to say. And you walk over there and you're like, I know exactly what, hey, I know what you're going to say. He had this, he had this, he had this, and you made a bigger issue of it. And then the coach goes, I uh, just want to let you know, did they get the escape? Is that the right score? And so you spent the last five minutes trying to debate yourself when all they want to know is that was the right score. So I tell the younger officials, guys, when you see the coach, open your eyes open your ears, not your mouth and listen and then deal with it. But yeah. it's uh, because a lot of times those coaches, like I said, uh, we don't have an emotional uh, agenda in the match or the game or whatever the coaches do. Um, we've been, I've been told time and time again, coaches are in there, they're sweating, they're doing this they're doing that. They're living, living. So when the coach gets upset, bear in mind, that is like a son or daughter out there. So Absolutely. go, yep, go out there, listen, and don't anticipate. Because like I said, as a young official, as a senior official, I kind of jumped the gun. And then, you know, the coach is so listen first. Listen yep. with your ears, not your mouth. So, and that's what I tell all my young officials. So, Well, I appreciate that, Dave. And before we turn it over to Brent, I think Brent's back on. One more comment I wanted to make about uh, uh, those of you that officiate with one or more partners one or more on a crew or more than one rather on a crew uh, where the coach will pull you aside and try to get you to be his or her ally by saying, what's John or what's Mary doing out there? What kind of call was that? Uh, and they'll challenge you because they uh, feel maybe comfortable talking to you or feel that you're gonna give them the answer that they want. Um, my answer has always been, uh, John, uh, coach John got a good look at it. He was right there. He got a good look at it. And sometimes you have to remember, uh, you're a crew. You're not independent of the people on your crew. You're, you're, you're part of a crew and you should be supporting each other. Talk about it at the end of the quarter, if necessary. Talk about it at halftime and after the game, whenever it's necessary. Uh, but always talk about it and don't be afraid to admit when you've made a mistake. Uh, as Dale Carnegie says, quickly and emphatically, you'll win more praise from coaches than anything else. But above all, be good trainers, uh, continue to work hard, know that you've got a tough job that quite frankly, a lot of people will not embrace as much as you have uh, and keep disseminating the information that you get uh, and having fun in the process doing it. Uh, I'm gonna turn over to Brent. Brent, if you're there. I am, thank you, Jim, uh, and all of you in attendance for tonight. Appreciate the participation and interaction. The discussion was good. Uh, and the presentation was well done. Thank you, Jim. Remember, folks, this is being recorded. It will be released to everyone on July 31st. In addition to this, we will have another Train the Trainer event uh, for all trainers of all sports. It will talk about uh, training um, in this new virtual world that we often find ourselves in. So I encourage you to keep your eyes open for that link that will be sent out soon uh, for next week sometime. Uh, and just like this meeting, it will be recorded as well, but we always do like to have folks on the live meeting to have this kind of discussion and, and good interaction. Also keep your eyes open for additional sports specific uh, officiate Michigan Day presentations and some general officiating uh, presentations as well. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Thank you, Jim. Everyone have a good night and a great C2.
season. Thank you much. Appreciate and it. Thanks, Jim. Nice job, Jim.